Aaron Swartz was uh, one of the most innovative people there is in the new media and uh, he had done some great work building the RSS standard uh, he had done work uh, architecting Creative Commons he was uh, one of the founders of Reddit now some get it people get into technical definitions of who's a founder but he was there in the beginning he had done some work in liberating public records building a free public library he'd worked with change congress fix congress first root strikers demand progress progressive change campaign committee etc uh, by all accounts an incredibly smart kid some would say justifiably so a genius now uh... he just committed suicide at the age of twenty six why did he do so of course now you can go with the standard explanations of depression etc uh, but the reality is his family says his friends say and what he was concerned about before he killed himself was an enormous federal investigation where he was charged with at least thirteen felony counts and could have served up to fifty years in prison my god what did he do to deserve that kind of punishment well uh, he went uh, into if the government's case is correct and we'll never know he went into a closet at MIT and plugged his laptop into it, downloaded academic papers from this thing called JSTOR. Now, this was such a grievous, grievous act that JSTOR said, we will not pursue criminal charges. In other words, not a big deal. Furthermore, they said, we will not even pursue civil charges. It's not that big a deal. It's not that important. Now, the government said, nope, nope. Uh, we think that this deserves, deserves at least 50 years. We're going to charge him with violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Now, did he do something criminal? Well, when the government explains its case, they explain that he violated the use of terms uh, for the service that he was uh, getting access to. So, wait a minute. Now, look, it all gets complicated in terms of the technical details, etc. But you have to understand something. He didn't even necessarily break the law he just they say our interpretation of this law is that if you violate the terms of service of anything that you have a contract with we can put you in jail it's a felony so if you were to access the for example the private members only uh, archives of the young turks what you can get up to fifty years in prison that's that's not an issue that we uh, settle civilly etc no 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 fifty years in prison of course it isn't about that it's about protecting the large pl institutional players. It's about going after people like Aaron Swartz because the government can't control them. And the government uh, doesn't have a monopoly on what they're good at, which is computers. They've got a monopoly on air power. They've got a monopoly on naval power. They've got a monopoly on all other weapons. But these guys who know about computers and can break into things, it scares them to death. That's why they're going so hard after Bradley Manning. That's why they're behind the scenes pursuing Julian Assange. That's why they went after Aaron Swartz with this nuclear weapon charge. 50 years in prison. Are you kidding me? Now look, there's an argument to be made that he might have violated copyright law. If you believe the government's case. Copyright law? 50 years? That's absurd. There's an argument to be made that he was a digital trespasser, and we're searching for arguments here for the government's case. You know what a real charge is for digital trespassing? A hundred dollar fine and up to 30 days in prison. He faced up to a million dollar fine and 50 years in prison. This is grotesque. And what happened? He had built up a fortune because of his work at Reddit, etc. Fortune depleted, trying to fight the government. Because the government was coming no matter what. JSTOR said, we don't want you to prosecute, we are the aggrieved party here. And what was it? What did he get that was so valuable? Academic papers. Are you kidding me? A who, academic papers. Lawrence Lessig, who knew him well, wrote, anyone who says that there is money to be made in a stash of academic articles is either an idiot or a liar. Professor Lessig is one of the most esteemed law professors in the country. He works at Harvard an idiot or a liar and they went after him anyway academic papers what was he gonna do make a fortune off of that no he was doing it on a cause that he believed in he thought that these were academic papers that should be fi uh, if you believe the government's case again should be shared with the public now look there's a good case to be made that hey look it takes a lot of effort 
to put it into JSTOR and that they should be properly compensated for that and you can't just take that and make it a public record. Fair, okay. You can have a case over that that is proportional, but this is nowhere near proportional. Let me go to Timothy Lee from the Cato Institute. Now remember, these are not liberals, this is a libertarian about the government's case. He says, the government seems to have lost all sense of proportion here. And the apparent legal theory behind the government's case that using a website in a manner that violates its terms of use constitutes felony computer hacking could have serious unintended consequences. Do you know the government's used this in the past? There was a case of the woman who uh, created a fake account on MySpace, MySpace, her last name is Drew, and now what she did with it was terrible. She went after uh, somebody uh, that her daughter knew in school, 13 years old, and it was bullying, and, and then they charged her with it. Now, every, nobody was on her side. She was bullying a, a young girl, etc. But the actual charge that they went after her is the same one they were going using Swartz. They're saying that creating a fake profile on MySpace was a felony because it violated the terms of service of MySpace. A felony. And this is crazy. You want to talk about unintended consequences? Who hasn't violated terms of service of the hundreds of things you've signed up to online? Are you positive you haven't violated any of them? See, what it allows the government to do is selective prosecution. Since the uh, law is so broad that almost anybody can be prosecuted on this, they selectively prosecute the people they don't like. Oh, you want to share information? You want to make it public? Well, our government despises that. They don't want transparency. It's not like we live in a democracy or anything. So if you try to make anything that uh, the government has, or in this case, JSTOR had, it's a private organization, public, but oh, you have you know, angered the corporate gods, well, then they're going to have to come and get you. And MIT, by the way, shares blame here, too, because they kept pursuing the case when there was no sense of proportionality. And they say now that they are looking into what went wrong and uh, if they were far too aggressive in going after Swartz. The answer is yes, you were. And it allowed the U.S. Attorney General, uh, at least um, the U.S. Attorney, I should say, in Massachusetts, which, by the way, there's already a petition on the White House government uh, to uh, make sure that she is demoted uh, for her bullying of Aaron Swartz. Uh, her name is Carmen Ortiz. So these people, if they actually try to share information, that is a huge threat to the government. And they must be selectively prosecuted. They must be eliminated. You bully them, you intimidate them, and you say, we're going to trial, and we're going to take every penny you have, and then we're going to try to put you in jail for 50 years. It is grotesque. Everything must be controlled. We cannot have a guy like Swartz who's figured out something the government can't figure out. Oh my God, the hackers are the most dangerous people in the world. Because they have a power, in a sense a weapon, the government does not have. And that is why the government is jealous of it and will try to do everything, no matter how unproportional it is, to try to stamp it out. So uh, the Obama administration, of course, which is uh, progressive, right, and democratic and brought us change, how do they respond to may, perhaps amending this law, which is what everybody's calling for today, because it is so broad and, and can be used uh, for so many different purposes, uh, as I explained here in this case, for selective prosecution. Well, Richard Downing, the Deputy Secretary Chief Compu of Computer Crime and Intellectual Property, says, removing parts of the law could make it difficult or impossible to deter and punish serious threats from malicious insiders. So the answer is no. We will not change the law. We will not amend the law. We will use it to crush our own citizens. That's the government we have. Because they're not really our government. They're the government of, by, and for corporate interests.